Okay, so one thing I saw Jordy do that I like is he makes these little owls out of... This is actually a piece of firewood kindling, but I believe it's pine. So I'm going to try to make a miniature little owl I can stick in another piece maybe. So with an owl, you kind of got to give them horns. So we'll give them horns. Because owls are cooler with horns, let's just omit that. Um, their head kind of goes boxy. It's like, I believe it's kind of like this. Little, little hook beak. He's got to have a beak. Of course, giant eyes. And then, you guys are totally laughing at my drawing, aren't you? And then, um, owls usually have a little bit of chest showing. So we'll give them a chest. And we'll give them a big old wing here. And owls kind of have tiny wings. And I might give them a little bit of a leg. And this guy, he's going to live in Hooterville. There you go. So we'll see what happens here. Oh, uh, wow. So the best way, I guess, to carve this out... What am I going to use? Since I don't have a flame burr... A strong flame burr anymore. I'm probably going to use. I'm probably going to use a wooden, uh, either a metal or an aluminum. We'll try them both and see which one works best. So I'll be back. These are the metal, aluminum. How do you British people say aluminium? Aluminium? Yeah, something like that. You British guys are cute. All right. Okay, so we're going to give this a go. I put on the metal. We're going to try that first. And we're going to work on our Al, who lives at the Shady Rest. He lives with Uncle Joe and Kate and, what is it, Betty Joe and Billy Joe and Bobby Joe? If you guys know what I'm talking about, feel free to mention it in the comments. It is one of my all-time favorite shows. And they're from Hooterville. So that's where we are in 15 minutes. It's roughed out. I'm going to switch bits and we're going to do his eyes now. Well, oh, maybe not. Let's see. Mm. Oh no. Are these too big? Mm, pretty big. All right, we'll be back. Okay, so I've switched over to the 1 8 Cuts All Extreme Round Burr. I don't know. This is going to be real close. I might run out of room here. So we're going to go softly into this good owl.
Hmm, what do you guys think? Oops, can I get it on the camera? There we go. Hmm, maybe. So I'm going to switch over to a smaller bit now, um, and I'll come back. All right, so owls actually have a pretty damn short beak. It's really tiny, and they've got this little nostril thing above. So I'm going to try to put that in. I am now switched over to a diamond burr, and it is a flame burr, eighth of an inch. It's really tiny. We'll see what happens here. Okay, so you can kind of see his beak. Depending on how much, how deep I go, I might put a hook in there and a little, a little hole if I have enough room. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually scallop some feathers in and round his face more, so he looks kind of more like an owl. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'll tie it all together. So here we go. At least I have an idea. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just making this up as I go. If you haven't figured it out. I don't know if you can tell anything's going on there yet. But I, I took the beak in and I'm starting to give him like kind of a little heart shaped face. He's not completely round. Now I'm going to cut all this back. But because this burr is so small, it takes a long time to sculpt it out. I need to probably go deeper in the eyes. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that yet. So we'll see what happens. One thing I kind of forgot is owls kind of have eye ridges, so I'm going to cut some ridges in. Okay, since I'm winging it as I go, I need to sit and think about the next couple pieces. Because, you know, you can really screw up the face. It's super easy. I don't have any room to work with here, so how am I going to do this? I probably need deeper eyes, uh, more of a curve here. I'm going to put a hole in the beak, and then I'll start all the feather work and shape them a little better. But we're close, and 20-something minutes later, we got this. <laughs> all right, I'll be back. So this is pretty much the first time I've carved miniature. This is the smallest thing I've ever made. I'm going to switch over to a smaller metal round burr, eighth inch. And I'm going to see if I can uh, go deeper in here. Okay, so when I started this, I was thinking, okay, that's a miniature. I could maybe knock this out in 10 or 15 minutes. We're over a half hour now, and it still doesn't really look like an owl. <laughs> I mean, it kind of does. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try some new metal burrs that I have not used before to do detail work. We're going to switch over to these guys. And um, I'm going to start putting in the feathers with this. Okay, I'll be back. So I have never used this micro... I guess it's like just a... I don't know what to call this thing. It's a diamond burb, straight point. Eighth of an inch. I don't know what I'm doing with this, but I'm going to try to fiddle with it and see if I can make some feathers. 
maybe trim some of this out and make it more head shaped and maybe try to put a, a beak in here I don't know we'll see what happens so here we go All right, I don't know how much detail you can see, but... All right, all that's pretty much left is I gotta shape the beak, do the eyes, and feather this. So, we're close. Someone smacked me and remind me that it takes probably longer to do a miniature than a real freaking carving. Real full size. Here we go. So, I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but I have an idea for the eyes. Okay, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I have an idea for the eyes. I'm going to torch it, and then I'm going to draw in feathers in the black. And it'll smooth all this out, too. So, I'm going to start torching. Okay, so this looks pretty black and beat up, but you'll see what I do here in a minute. I'm going to actually carve a lot of that out. So safety gloves. What I'm going to do now, is he's got some pupils in there now, I'm going to put this in and roll it into the feathers. And it'll be like a radial pattern, kind of like a bicycle. All the way around it, it'll give him a bunch of depth and feathers. I don't know if this will work. I'm totally winging this, so maybe this will. We'll see. So, my camera has not been working well and it just dropped out, but I didn't realize it until after it finished the owl. So I'm going to talk you through what you missed. So here he is. What I did is um, we got to the part where I put a beak in. So you can see, maybe from the side of the beak, that you can actually uh, go through here and it's hollow underneath, like I hollowed it out. So it looks like a beak and I hooked it. I changed over. This is the smallest bit I have. This burr is a diamond burr and it's very pointy. And it's the smallest one I have. This is what I did all the finishing work with. So I went in here and did the beak. 
I carved this center da area down and put nostrils in. This way I could hook the beak. So the beak's got a little 3D effect to it. It's hooked. But I had to carve down the nose area with the nostrils. Um, and then as far as the horns go, what I did here is I dragged this diagonally back and forth and it gave it a feathered look by dragging it, dragging it, dragging it, dragging it and then I kind of went like this across the top and dragged it down to give it kind of a 3D look and I did it on both sides so he's got little tufts now I put him on a log and I pretty much used that same burr to finish everything, do all the fine work. And what I finally did, the very last step is, <clears throat> you know, after I, I had burned them early so we could do the eyes and do all the feathering. And uh, what my final thing was, of course, is I, I signed it. But the um, last step is I put glow in the dark. Because who, who doesn't want, uh, it's glow in the dark paint, who doesn't want an owl who glows at night? So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this guy, because he's not finished on the back. I mean, I just burned it, but he's not completely 3D. But what I could either do is, I could drill a hole in here, and maybe insert a rod. I was thinking maybe a chopstick or something. Drill a chopstick, put epoxy in it, and then drill it down into another piece, uh, drill a hole, so they, and epoxy them together, so it has like a dowel rod holding it in place. I could put this into another piece. Or, you know, I've got this idea, and this is super ambitious for my skill level, but I kind of want to build a chess set. You know, that's a lot of pieces. What is a chess set? Uh, 32 pieces? Right? Um, I think that's what it is. So, you can leave them flat like this on the back with a chess set. But the, uh, I, I mean, I was thinking maybe like a northern theme where there's, there's, um, porcupines and beavers and maybe a bear and a moose I don't know I haven't quite figured out all the animals yet for the I, I can't figure out what a pond should be like what's a northern animal who moves really slow maybe a snail little snail ponds could be cute I don't know if there's a northern snail though so I'm trying to make it because I live in New Hampshire so I was trying to make it like specific to the animals you'd see around here I don't know so I'm not sure what to do with it. Anyway, I'll put the picture of him glowing. And he gives a hoot, hoot, hoot. He's also just kind of fun to play with. So, thanks for hanging with me. Go try it now. They're pretty fun.